Okay, we've got some minutes from the meeting of December 3rd, gentlemen. Any additions or corrections? I did not. I picked them up Friday. And they look back here to me. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, second. Mike? Yes. DJ? Yes. John? Yes. Okay, we've got uh, Chief Phillips here for his regular report. Got two things tonight. One is uh, I just got a short one. The due to date calls are at 6:54. Uh, last year at this time we we're at 6:51, so we're real close. We had three. Um, with that being said, it's contract time again. So our new corporation president Mario Minacci is here to talk with you folks about our contract. All right. All right, you have the floor. All right, thank you. So, I uh, should keep this very brief. And you know, it is customary that the new president generally brings refreshments, doesn't he? I forgot to tell him that. <laughs> My apologies. Sorry, Mario. I hate to get off on a rocky start. <laughs> um, Just don't let it happen again. All right. So, our uh, contract for this year that we're presenting to you guys um, it's going to be for the same as last year, $696,000. Um, of note, too, with our capital purchase list this year, it's um, slightly more than it would usually be. A significant portion of that, about 134000 is for replacement air packs. Um, our air packs are coming up on being out of date. We have applied for a grant to replace those, but uh, in the event that we do not get that grant, we won't have we budgeted appropriately for them. Um, really quick while we're talking about grants, we did find out today as well, we got um, about a $10,000 grant for clubs and hoods from the Bureau of Workers' Comp. So um, that should be coming towards us shortly. And then also with the contract for the year, um, we had some pay increases over the last year. We did a survey of area departments um, to see what going rate was for firefighter, paramedics, EMTs, and advanced um, providers, and did some pay increases to put us in line with other area partners. Well, it did been quite a while since you had done any increases. Right, been a number of years. I don't know exactly how many, but... Um, and so here's a copy of those for you. You guys have questions about any of that? Uh, grants. You guys doing that in house still? Yep. Mm -hmm. Still handled in house. Uh, the secretary of our board, Keith Lazer, is our primary person that handles those. So it's kind of become a business of its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely has for sure. So. Yeah, well, Keith's pretty good at the grants. Um, we have used uh, some outside consultants on some of the larger stuff in the past, just there's certain things, you know, it, it's worth paying up front to get it done right, especially if it's a significant size grant. But uh, most of the stuff keeps them pretty pretty good job for us. And we've got several EMS grants that helped us with equipment replacement. Um, we've applied for several FEMA grants. Uh, one of them a few years back was uh, major radio replacement, which is we went in with a couple other townships in the county, which made it regional. But uh, we're, we're trying to get, get go after money when we can. Did you yeah. mention the dates? Um, contract? We changed the dates on the for, contract. Oh, for our payments? Right. There's three payments still. Uh, we moved them into the next year so that they would coincide with our first county draws coming in. So the first one's uh, March 1st, yep. and then June 1st, and then September yeah, one thing I know too is you get what I want to mention is that uh, how many years have been now that we've been doing the insurance reimbursement uh, for accidents? I mean, we started that back in 2008. Oh, yeah, so we did that for quite a while now. 
What would you say our average is per year that we're bringing you know, up the insurance? Last, last year it was about 85000 This year I think we're going to be 100 something so, which helps out. So it's uh, it's been very helpful and you know, it's not an insignificant part of the budget. Well, even with the fact that uh, Medicare has been cutting back too in, in some of those areas, um, it's still still working for us and it pays to go after it. We're contracting with an outside billing agency, which is the best thing we could have ever done because they stay up to date on all the laws and stay on top of that stuff so they know what they can go after and get and what they can't get. Uh, and you might want to mention too uh, the, the soft billing aspect of it for township residents. Right. Uh, soft billing, we're only billing what the insurance will pay, and nothing comes out of a resident's pocket. And uh, if it's not a resident, they'll bill them three times and if they can't pursue it then they let it go after that. But it's 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 not meant to hurt people. No. And that's that's our whole thing is we want to be there just like to help people especially but especially for residents to let them know that you know a lot of people I don't want to call an ambulance on it. You won't have any bills. It won't cost you anything. So don't be shy. Well it's helped offset some of the costs is just uh, like when we got that Lucas machine that we had Mr. Tomaselli up here a while a while ago. Uh, that was about fifteen thousand dollars worth of material that the hospital donated to us. But also, it's like our life pack fifteens. They're about forty thousand a piece. When we have three of them. But you know, it, it, the thing is, what would you want to be exactly you if you were having a heart attack? Would you want the best? Would you want something mediocre? Our outlook is not the best for our residents and and whoever else would chance. Yeah, appreciate you guys coming. Uh, Fred, there's no problem with the payment schedule, is there? No, that was, uh, we adjusted to that March date primarily because we get our first tax distribution in February. So that's a good thing. And the other thing is, uh, like you sent this to the prosecutor's office, and she approved it as the form. So, right. I have about two copies, one for you guys and one for us. And uh, we actually have a copy stamp by the prosecutor. That's what we brought to, but that's fine. Better be prepared than not to All right, so all that out of the way, I'll make a motion to approve that contract for with the VFD for the upcoming. Second. Mike? Yes. DJ? Yes. John? Yes. One thing I just want to interject uh, that uh, we do have two gentlemen here from the road department and uh, we don't always have that happen cross paths, but uh, you know I've been very pleased with the cooperation between the firemen and, and the road guys whenever we've had the trees down and we'll quote, quote emergency situations. Uh, it's, it's been a great working relationship. Uh, and the whole bottom line is what we need to do to get services back up and running for our community. And, uh, you know, that didn't always happen back years ago. And uh, I, I really think it gets better every year. So, uh, uh, thank you guys for that cooperation. Sometimes they don't understand. They're there for the moment. We're here for the you got to pick it all up after we're gone. Well, <laughs> yeah. A lot of times the cleanup is more work than the initial yeah. part of yeah. it. Okay. Anyway. Thank, thanks again, guys. We really appreciate how you work with us. and um, it, it's, it's really a, a pleasure to work with our work. So. Yes. Question for Mr. Bonacci. You threw out a number, $134,000 for replacing your packs. What are those and how many do you get? So that uh, 134,000 mark, well, so first, what are they? Um, those are the breathing air packs that we have when we're going into a fire. Um, so it's compressed air that's in a bottle and then goes to a face piece so that we're able to have fresh air in smoky environments or CO calls, anything where we would need um, our own air supply. The 134,000, where we're getting that number from, is about 20 air packs, that would be. 
um, along with the appropriate masks and yeah, spare bottles. For them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have to have them. Can't run into a fire without it. And Carl could tell you that like the days we used to do that probably. Yeah. <laughs> Once. Oh. Uh, it's like I said, the rescue business is an expensive business. Oh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately we have to deal with that. Okay, thanks. I appreciate you coming up and look forward to another year of uh, success. Thank you. Okay, you want to sign? Those don't call for witnesses, do they? Do they? No. no, not required. Yeah, we'll take it with us. No, thank you. Okay, Mr. Troy. Okay. Uh, Nancy had an idea, which I kind of concur with. I'm just going to run past you guys and all the fire departments here. She was thinking about taking a uh, or recommended taking the flag drop-off box and moving it to the somewhere on the fire department property. She thought that it would give more visibility to the events you have there than currently at the town hall. I thought it made sense. What do you guys think about it? I don't have a problem with it. Um, where would you want to put it? Somewhere on concrete, for sure. Because I've already had comments about having to walk up to it. The concrete wasn't you know, fortunate. You guys want to just take a look at it when you're down there, maybe give us a recommendation where you think it'd be a good place. Right. I don't want to make you know, I don't want to put something that's going to be you know in your way. We don't have the amphitheater or anything, right? Or no, still no. doing that or no, no, guys? just the scouts come out. The scouts are doing it. Yeah. And it does get used. It does get used. Yeah. yeah, the only thing is we can't put it on. Uh, Northern side of the pad because that's where we push all the snow off. I'm just offhand and I'm not suggesting anything, but that east entrance at the south end, at the, uh, on the east side, the old main front doors. You know what I mean? Yeah, we narrowed up the sidewalk so that pad's not as wide as it used to be. Okay, I think that was just a thought. Uh, yeah, when we uh, did the station addition, we narrowed it down to a regular sidewalk size. Okay. We don't have to make a decision on exactly where we'll, to put it. We'll take a look at it. Too. Take a look at it. Okay. And uh, once again, we get, we're uh, eligible for the that NOPEC uh, community grant. Uh, that was uh, $1,500. And we were awarded that last year, and we distribute that among the scouts, mm -hmm. the different scout troops. I just want to see if you guys are able to doing that again. Uh, I am. Kind of the same distributions that we did. Yeah, it was 4-H. Well, and, and the 4-H. 4-H and the Scouts. Yeah, 4-H and Girl Scouts, I think. Right, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Okay, so if we're awarded that, then uh, just make a motion to distribute the same as we did uh, last year. Second. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John? Yes. Okay, and lastly, uh, Nancy sent in an application for an Atarma Moore grant. Uh, it's $500. Uh, and we were thinking of using that for uh, the fire exit light at zoning and uh, some parking lights. So. Don't know if we can get that or not, but if we do, we're just going to see if you guys Sounds have any other ideas for if that seems like that. Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, I won't put that in a form of motion until we see if we get the grant. I just want to run it past you. That's all that I had.
Mr. Cameron. Uh, just a couple of things. I had some meetings before I had my unfortunate facial calamity a couple of weeks ago. But one of them, uh, I happened to miss that meeting, but I got all the follow-up on it. Is uh, oh, let's see. I'm thinking maybe 12 to 15 years ago, we got notice from first of all from a longtime resident that uh, was aware of a lot more stuff than anybody in the county. Was remember John Ryboff telling us about the upcoming NPDES phase two stormwater runoff and management, things like that. Uh, we were part of that program at the start. Uh, a tiny sliver of the township, the border Bainbridge, it basically encompassed Indian Hills, not much more than Indian Hills subdivision. Uh, at that time, it was kind of, no one quite knew how to handle this. I think it was being run, I know it was being run through the health department, and each individual township was kind of required to implement best management practices and everything else. You remember uh, Watershed Partners came out and mm -hmm. coached us at, at length. Actually, there was, some, there was some time they spent on this. And not just us, but with the other townships that have to be members. And right about the time, we applied for a waiver. We were probably two, three months into this. And we applied for a waiver. And at the same time that was going on, the health department kind of asked out and the county engineer took over the program. So we got our waiver right about the time the engineer was stepping in to organize everything. And uh, we really didn't follow much after that. We, we did some uh, we did, uh, determined best management practices. We implemented what we could. We did a lot of the preliminary stuff that was required. Uh, but then we were no longer in the program. But now, based on last census and whoever's in management at EPA in Ohio now, uh, a couple more townships are going to be in, us and Chardon, along with all the original Western Tier townships. And uh, it was kind of a get to know you meeting they had the other day. I talked to Frank out to meet you about it today, and they'll be upcoming requirements, but it's nothing like it was initially because the engineer has professionally taken this on as part of their duties, and I guess that's true in most rural counties across the state, so I don't anticipate a whole lot of more paperwork or cost, probably some, but uh, there'll be some more time involved with it. So it's probably a little more reasonable than the first go around. That was the no, end. Like nobody knew what they were doing then. I mean, What's the official name of the program? N P D E S Phase Two. That's Phase Two. Unless it has a new acronym now. That was the original acronym. So. Anyway, so more township requirements, but like I said, I don't think it's going to be quite as dramatic as it seem to be at the start. That's really all I have. Fred. Um, first of all, I have warrants uh, 4878. Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 4908 in front of you totaling $161,283.86. Um, a couple of those are final payments on road projects, which we'll review later. Also have in front of you your revenue summary report, fund summary report, and appropriation status report. A couple of re resolutions here that I need to talk to you about, because I need money. Um, first one is for temporary appropriations for fiscal year 2019. You each have a copy of this resolution in front of you. Um, temporary appropriations. Uh, this really reflects uh, what was in the proposed 2019 budget, and uh, this uh, hopefully, with some slight adjustments, can be adopted as our permanent appropriations once we get into the fiscal year next year. I'll work with uh, the department heads, uh, Chief Phillips and um, Emmer Gordon, to kind of make sure these numbers are accurate. There's, uh, there's a couple things in here that 
we didn't really appropriate for last year. Uh, like the there's a capital outlay in the fire levy fund for the purchase of a fire truck. Uh, we we spent a hundred thousand this year. Uh, we'll be spending a hundred thousand next year, um, and I believe the fire department is close to matching that amount for the purchase of the, the, new, the new pump truck, right? Yes. And, um, of course, health insurance across the board has gone up considerably. Um, there's a uh, 15 plus percentage increase over last year. It keeps increasing. It's not a surprise, but uh, it's just one of our bigger expenses. Everything else is pretty much on par with last year. So I will go ahead and read the resolution. Resolution 2018-40. Uh, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Auburn Township, Jogger County, Ohio, that to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures said Board of Trustees during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019. The following sums are hereby set aside and appropriated for the several purposes for which expenditures are to be made for and during said fiscal year as follows. And following that are line item appropriations. So if anyone wants to make a motion, so no, please. Second. Mr. Everly. Mike? Yes. DJ? Yes. John? Yes. We have uh, another resolution for supplemental appropriations. Um, did almost the same exact resolution at the last meeting. Um, we're having a lot of events at Adam Hall, which is a good thing, but we have to pay Matt Flowers to wrap and clean up there. Um, so once again, I have to ask for more money to pay him. Uh, resolution 2018-41, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Auburn Township, Jogga County, Ohio, the following supplemental appropriations are necessary to pay for contracted services, namely cleaning and hall representation, $550 to general fund account, $1,120,360 contracted services, $1,800 to general fund account, $1,690,360 contracted services. So moved. Second. <coughs> to uh, direct the road department to uh, procure, find, a, locate a pickup truck, and I believe they're here to report what their findings are. Mr. Ludwig and Mr. Sturmer here. Okay. The last couple weeks, Mark and I have been going out on uh, looking at trucks that were the requirements that the, that the, we felt that was our needs and what you felt our needs was is a crew cab so we can move four to five guys, four-wheel drive, um, and um, snow, a snow pile with the prep package. So Mark and I, he, he did a lot of research on the internet. We physically went out. We went to Junction, looked at the Ram product. We went to Haas Automall, looked at down in Ravenna. We looked at, got a pricing from them. We did go down to Randolph. We went down to Sarshone looked at their vehicles too and what what our findings of it was is initially we were looking at as we we're talking and involving the situation was when we started with with ram the initial thought was we wanted a, a gas gas block 
and what we ended up finding out is we went out last year and we procured the hot box and it has a GVW of 14,000 pounds. So if we wanted to go out and do cold patch in the winter, we could throw three, four guys in, but also it would give us a capability in the winter of if we have a burial, we have to strip one truck, we have to take the salt spreader off and take take that one apart to just be able to go dig a grave and then put it back together, which Murphy's Law is, it always snowing to beat the band when you get a, when you get a funeral. So when we started looking at the pulling capabilities and that um, the salesman off the junction said, hey, I want you to look at this one. It was an 18, which we we're striking to find a, a model year old, thinking we could get a better discount. So we looked at the gas engine, he pulled the, the diesel out, which would give us the capability of, in a pinch, pulling the excavator, or even the skid steer, and the hot box also. And he actually suggested to us at that time was, you don't want a three-quarter ton in the ram line, you want a one ton, still single rear wheel, but you get the leaf spring back, you don't get the coil, so it's like a Ford or a GM product, you'd be back to the old school leaf spring. So we re researched that, and it, it was a pretty appealing price to what our budget was roughly set at. So um, we told them that we wanted a couple add-ons, and that, um, as you can see in the in the spreadsheet that I did, we were asking for steps and mud flaps, stuff to pr protect it, and seat cover since this is a cloth vehicle on the inside. So we went to Haas to see, and Mark had dealt with them personally to see if we could beat the number that Junction gave us. They couldn't, which that's the next number on the sheet, that they couldn't beat it because they didn't have one sitting on their lot. So then we <coughs> proceeded down the street to Sarshone, and we talked to another gentleman that Mark knew, and all the way over on the far right side of the spreadsheet, it's shown the the number of 42,000 that was for a gas block and as you can see with no extras on their on their vehicle it didn't pull as much but the but the price it was almost four thousand dollars more they only had 19s again they had to order a unit so then that salesman said go down the street see my buddy down at the Chevy dealer so we went down same situation their number even got higher, which he thought it would have been lower. So basically what happened is after after we looked and talked and Mark worked with the salesman a little bit more on a couple things and that, um, as you can see on the, on the, it'd be the third sheet in, that's the truck that they had sitting on the lot. And with our, with our municipal pricing, just their sticker price with their sale was at forty six thousand nine eighty five. With the municipal discount, they got got us basically seven hundred dollars less than what they had us sitting on the floor for, and we got the extra add-ons that we could utilize the vehicle. So the the other vehicles they they printed up the window stickers. They were close, but not apples to apples. But when you're starting out more. There's no sense in, in dragging them along because we knew our budgetary constraint of what the target number was roughly. So with with that, um, does the board have any questions? That's just on the truck side. Some of those, there was no 18 inventory available. Right. And the junction was the only one that had Yeah, G, GM and Ford had no 18 inventory in, in, at all. So... Well, I think the trailer towing capacity just came up with that's a that's a big plus for right. That's given us a lot more all the utility for right. the truck. Right, and that, and um, the way that they were talking to, we could have went to a gas block in the six four with the Dodge. Problem with it is your fuel economy is horrendous. We're paying a little bit more up front for the diesel, but we're getting a lot more on on the backside with with you know. That that diesel's built. Oh, yeah, this will right. this will be a parts runner, right? To some right. degree. Right. Um, oh, and, right. and I just I just want to add to this too that this is not anything new. The, 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 we looked at a 
We were going to do something like this, what, 10, 12, 15 years ago? It, it's, it's came to the table a couple times, and then it, and it then shifts it, it out. evolved into, it went from a pickup truck, it evolved into, a, that was an F450 we bought. Yeah. That was just a, a lemon. We kind of split the difference between a real truck and a pickup truck, right. and we paid for that right. from the time we bought it. Right. Um, I, you know. I, I'm glad you're not putting a bed in this thing. No. <laughs> I didn't want it to go that far. No. Uh, but I think you've thought through some of the other stuff to right. save you some labor. You right. Know. And that. I mean, the other thing to remember, too, is, you know, the, the, back when we did that at 450, and the garage was full. We didn't have room for stuff. Stuff was right. inside. This would be inside. Right. And you guys have proved, you know, you can maintain everything right. there. Right. And uh, I, I just think it's time. We, I tried to do it once before, but right. I botched that one, but I, I think this will work out quite well. Way more efficient to have a pickup run around instead of a big truck. Sure. All right. sure. Just like our shuttle car we use all the time. All right. Exactly. So. Yeah, one thing too, you have to know that on, on average one of these road projects, Emmerich's going out and talking to if you have sometimes a hundred. All right. This vehicle has the ability to take more than two people. All right. I think it's uh, I, I think it's, it was way past time, but uh, I, I think he did a good job of uh, narrowing down, and uh, at least we uh, can use this for a lot. Right. I mean, this, that this being able to tow the mini excavator is a big deal. Well, you, even with the hot box, you get the beginning of the spring. You're right between where. Hey, we're still got them set up for salt, but the other thing that we were talking is with the hot box, you're not shoveling up high, you're shoveling down low. So, I mean, it'll give us versatility mm -hmm. as we need it mm -hmm. and that. And then down on the bottom, Mark and I researched the snow plows. We're looking just plain Jane, eight foot steel snow plow that, you know, we could do this. You know, the cemeteries hit or miss in various situations like that. Um, I put the prices down in the corner. We looked at the looked at the boss. Mark has a boss. We looked at the western. It seems like there's another set of moving parts in it. Um, you know, the boss. It's nice and clean. It's got its own kickstand because. I believe on the western they have was it like two receiving horns that you have to put in. Right, they're additional. They usually rattle. It's just more, more linkages to beat up. Right. Uh, the boss also has down pressure, which is nice if you're back dragging. Right. Is there any other questions on that? We anticipate using that plow. We, we could, uh, uh, this year we're contracted through Rubik, but next year we could we could think about doing the cemeteries with it. Or during events. Right, or during events. During a burial that it right. plowed immediately or even during the event. Right. Because typically with, with what uh, Tom does right now is he plows after the event or if we need them for the event. So it might be that maybe we might do it in-house since it's not a pressing like, you know, we get an inch of snow on the road, we have to be out there where we can let it build up to four inches or five inches and go in after the fact. When we have a little bit of idle time and somebody can go up there and take care of it or, you know, say this lot gets fill, filled up, you know, you need to clean it during the daytime, time can't come in or something. So the big truck doesn't fit. That's right. Make it a lot easier for the fire station in places too where John's going. Right. If you gotta cut it next to the doors. Yeah, it's pretty tight, you yeah. know, up in there. So Okay. They're gonna put me in and start training me on it. You start with yeah. snow shovel first. Every time you get more. Well, we'll things start with the small yeah. shovel and then go to the big one. Yeah, right. yeah I'll get the grandkids shovel to search it. We have for money, Fred. You and I were talking about Probably. this when you were low and I was high. So. <laughs> yeah, we've uh, we've got the money. I 
That's what we did give I it discussed this with Mr. Gordon. I said, we have money. We need to start idling the spending process. We have the money now. <coughs> That sounded like a hint to me. I think Fred's planning on going. I won't ask for anything else this year, Fred. I'm good. <laughs> this is you said with two weeks of Christmas here. Yeah, okay. We're going to drive it, Fred. We would like right. to add a helmet. We'd like to get a helmet. <laughs> We'd like to well. make a motion that we go with the uh, <laughs> Ram Conjunction, as discussed. It's a 2018. Yeah, 2018. I think we'll go with the leading Yeah, that's probably yeah. not accurate. So then, yeah. The purchase of the new 2018 Ram 3500 Tradesman Crew Cab 4x4. 6-4-inch box, and with the 8-inch steel Boss Super Duty eight foot. Eight foot. installed. So we're looking at uh, 51,000... Would be 5180150. Okay. I'll second. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John? Yes. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. your efforts. Thank you. As usual, you did a very thorough job. Yeah, thanks, guys. Our experts in the field. Uh, we also, at the last meeting, we discussed uh, putting security cameras in. Uh, we do need to uh, have a Wi-Fi to run that with, and uh, we don't have that down at Adam Hall. We can do that for $20 a month. Okay. Yeah. I think it so would moved. Be more than an adequate second. It's a motion to give it or Fred, if you can't ride any faster, we're not going to put you in this truck. I can just tell you that right now. <laughs> motion to get internet. Uh, Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John? Yes. Okay, as we all know, we completed our road projects. We got the final billing in uh, from Chagrin Valley Paving. Uh, just to review, whenever you do a road project, it's not the bid amount, it's based on the quantities, and the quantities are such that it resulted in a uh, $21,193 deduct. So I'm going to make a, upon getting a recommendation from the Java County Engineers, a uh, recommendation to pay. I'm going to recommend we pay, uh, pay the bill for the resurface of Taylor May Road to Chagrin Valley Paving. Second. $117,160.20. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John? Yes. Uh, once again, uh, Ronyak Paving did our contract for asphalt paving at various roads. That resulted in a decrease of $126.30. And uh, we once again have a recommendation from the county engineers to make the final payment to Ronyak. And, uh, yeah. Amount is twenty nine thousand four hundred sixty eight dollars and sixty cents, and then I'll make the motion to pay it. Second.
Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John? Yes. Okay, in public comment? Yes. Yes. Hey, Fred, it's for you. Um, warrant 4908 to Paul Davis uh -huh. for not very much, 300 bucks. Right. Uh, that was uh, because they rented Adam Hall for their Christmas party and they get a oh, damaged oh, deposit. Before. Yeah, okay, that's more logical. Okay. Okay, gentlemen, we have uh, two interviews to conduct here. Uh, John, one other quick thing. Oh, you have something? Yeah, we have that uh, there you go. The bomber's ad for that. And uh, I think, you know, we should do something. I'd like to recommend we go with the, the quarter page ad for a hundred bucks. Just congratulations to the township. Well, that's for the, what's that, the Shrimp Valley Commerce? Yeah, it's going to be that. Oh, I think we should be in on that's not going to happen every year. So, no. um, they will. Uh, I mean, you know, we can do the bad cover for 500 bucks, bucks, but we're not trying to get any any business out of this, so I think a, a small congratulatory thing, unless you have any additional thoughts. We did the, we hosted the dinner they had that week, I think it was on a Thursday, yeah, it was a Thursday, I think the 6th, right. uh, well attended, we found a banner, we had a banner made real quickly, and uh, vinyl one, and uh, well, I don't want to catch it now because the uh, ad reservation deadline is December 21st and we're not meeting again until January or something. Yeah. So, you know, we did uh, we did kind of do what we could in uh, 48 hours of us to get out sign from the highlight out from yeah. there too. And, uh, you know, we waived all, all fees for that as well. Uh, and you, yeah, I think see the option is that this. Um, and, and I kind of... I don't think we have to go crazy, but I'd like to have something in there. Yeah, I agree with Mike on that. Hold on a second. I'll send it. motion to go into executive session for the purpose of 2019 BZA Zoning Commission in case you represented interviews per RCU 121.22 G. Second. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John? Yes. Okay. Executive session. Merry Christmas.